Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Peace United Church of Christ. Where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today we begin a four-part four worship series on pivoting, and today we're going to be talking about awareness. And I know if you're anything like me, you're really excited to talk about self-reflection. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be a rip roaring service today, <laughs> similar to uh, last week's when we had all the Freedom School scholars jumping around in here. So just so you are aware of that, that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, so I'm just grateful you're here. I'm grateful for Sue to be playing and sharing music with us this morning while Darcy's out on uh, vacation, which is well deserved for Darcy for certain. Uh, I'm going to invite you to open your hearts and minds to these opening words. I will just speak them and I'll just invite you to take them in, in uh, the way you see fit. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 I think so you're I want self I think I better do a little bit more of that. Sorry, excuse my language. That was almost... That almost happened. Yes, before we do the opening words uh, to bring us into some quiet and self-reflection, I, um, I would like to share this prayer quilt. You know we create these, the uh, Quilters and Arts create these beautiful prayer quilts for folks, and we, uh, and we started once again sending them around, and we tie the ties and pray for the person for whom this quilt is going to be uh, sent. 
And that the person that we're going to send it to at, uh, today, we do not know. Uh, Roger and Al know her. Her name is Ellen, and that, uh, she is Roger's niece. And she has uh, incurable cancer, and she has gone into hospice. And so we want to be praying for her and her family and her uh, peace of mind. And uh, so we're going to start that. I'm going to start it over here. I'll start with Debbie, and we'll move it around. Okay. You will take in these opening words that I will share with you this morning. Like the sun that is far away and yet close at hand to warm us, so God's spirit is ever present and around us. Come creator into our lives. We live and move and have our very being in you. Open now the windows of our souls. Amen. Now let us sing together, standing in body or spirit, from our hymnal, number 314, Community of Christ, from our hymnal, number 314. <laughs> Prevents communication. 
Help us to come home to your love by becoming one family on this planet we all call home. Amen. Please join in the opening response in the hymnal number 526, Sia Yamba, number 526.
too. Right. Um, I have to say before I read the scripture that uh, uh, I was laughing while we were clapping because uh, at the uh, Proctor Conference last week, uh, we listened to, we had the opportunity to hear the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss III speak twice. And uh, one of his sermons was about uh, music. It's, it's about oppression, but he, uh, the whole thing was about music. And he talked about the people that clap on the one and the three, and the people that clap on the two and the four. Now, some of you are laughing, but I don't, I still don't know what the difference is and what that means. So, um, and then he talked about the people like Wendy that clap on both beats. So I have to not look at her when we clap, and I had to look at Judy because she was clapping. So I figured, okay, if Judy sings, she knows what she's doing. So, um, <laughs> so I was clapping with Judy. But, uh, we, um, we were talking with the governing body about it and trying to figure out how we might share some of these um, sermons. It was just phenomenal and enjoyable. Um, anyway, the first reading is from Matthew chapter 7. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye while the log is in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. And this is the uh, poem, The Journey by Mary Oliver. One day, you finally knew what you had to do and began. Though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice, though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles, mend my life, each voice cried, but you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do, though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations through their, though their melancholy was terrible. It was already late enough, and a wild night, and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voice behind, the stars began to burn through the, through the sheets of clouds, and there was a new voice which you slowly recognized as your own, that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world, determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life that you could save. For the wisdom contained in these holy words, we give thanks. Amen. Have compassion for everyone you meet, even if they don't want it. What seems conceit, bad manners, or cynicism is always a sign of things no ears have heard, no eyes have seen. You don't know what wars are going on down where the spirit meets the bone. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Artificial intelligence. The use of artificial intelligence, or AI, is expanding. If you don't know that, you're obviously not on a computer. <laughs> AI gets its information from human beings. It learns to chat like a person by scanning and aggregating huge amounts of information that comes from human beings. It peeks into social media and anywhere it can gain access, which is a lot of places, folks. 
and rapidly detects patterns in our language and work and then reproduces them. In 2016, Microsoft launched the Twitter chatbot, Tay. In the space of one day, one day, Tay went from tweeting, hello world, to declaring Hitler was right. Tay didn't come to that conclusion alone. Tay gathered up information from human beings on social media and other platforms to come to that conclusion. AI detects patterns in our language. AI is trained on human behavior, on our behavior. AI is reflecting our words and patterns. Why am I beginning our time together this morning with research around artificial intelligence? It seems clear that humanity would benefit from taking a little time for more self-reflection, looking at who we are, what we say, how we live, how we act, taking some time to look in the mirror. I'm not saying we should stop looking through lens to analyze what's, uh, what's going on in the world, to talk about solutions and all that kind of stuff. I am saying we need to add the mirror, the self-reflective piece, to make change in the world. Let me give you an example using a story my Uncle Peter sent my way. It comes from a 2019 sermon titled Trump or Jesus, by James Tallarico, a state representative in Texas, for heaven's sakes. Isn't that something, how we're learning something from a state representative in Texas this morning? And a sign here, if you don't know who he is, just as I did not know it, uh, in uh, fact, was introduced to him by my Canadian uncle. You should look him up. Anyway, Mr. Tallarico tells this story. On July 29, 2019, a train belonging to Black Jewel LLC started carrying more than a million dollars worth of coal out of the mountains of Kentucky. You see, the company declared bankruptcy, and the company's executive used rigged bankruptcy laws to renege on their final salary obligations to their coal miner workers. Think about what they're doing here. This left the workers' families high and dry. The company executives had no compassion for the people who spent their time doing the dirty and dangerous job of coal mining, work that made the executives huge amounts of money. Tallarica goes on to say, and I quote, hate, greed, inhumanity. These sins are not individual character traits. They are the ocean in which we all swim. They are not a light switch you can turn on and off. Our culture infects each and every one of us to some degree or another. We spend so much time in our current media environment identifying these qualities in others, but instead of binoculars, I think we need a mirror." End quote. Then he asks the question, invites us into self-reflection. In what ways are we the train barreling through the Kentucky mountains powered by inhumanity? About a month ago, the house right next door to mine was sold. It was sold to an organization that supports veterans and their families who have drug and alcohol addictions. The house next door is the first stop on their way to recovery. It is the detox house. Now, I spent years building relationships with people who live with drug and alcohol addictions. I am passionate about seeing people take steps into recovery. But next door, detox. My bedroom window sits right next to the back door where the people step out to smoke their cigarettes. It might also be the place they step out to leave. I know what happens when people leave recovery programs. And often when people leave, they take things that don't belong to them to help finance their next drink or hit. I live next door. I stand 
stand up here every Sunday and talk about compassion and love and justice. I say all people are beloved children of God, precious children of God. And on that day, I was told who would be living next door to me, my first response was crap. <laughs> it was actually not that, but there's only so much I can say in church. And then I thought about this worship series I was preparing for, and then I thought about the scripture passage I had chosen for what I call Mirror Sunday. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? And you know I've had a lot to say about what people say about not in my backyard. And I thought, can't see it, because I'm swimming in it. I'm guessing right now, you're thinking about times something similar happened to you. Knee-jerk reaction to people asking for money off the ramp of the interstate. Concern when you see a bunch of young guys with low-hanging low pants coming your way. Surprise when a black person speaks eloquently. Wow, they were so well-spoken. Quick judgments regarding the financial situations of people who are poor. I can go on and on and on. You know what I'm getting at. It's so easy to talk about compassion and love, more difficult to live it out. We are barreling down that mountain, swimming in the ocean of hate, greed, and inhumanity. We can surely see what's wrong in the world. Just look at what happened in the mountains of Kentucky. Just look at what's happening right now in the world. You can look any direction and you'll see something going wrong. Those executives are doing awful things, those executives in Kentucky. We make judgments day in and day out about other people. We live in a cancel culture that does not allow any mistakes or missteps. We have become so divided, we cannot talk with each other when we disagree. Ken, I thought a lot about you while I was writing this sermon. Not that we disagree, but that that's what you want to do. <laughs> Ken wants to have conversations with people he disagrees with. We blame the other, the other. We do not even know their names. That's how bad it's gotten. We blame the other. We are quick to judge and bring solutions, less quick to think about how we might be complicit in the world's woes. What might happen if we are forced with some of the things we judge other people by? It's been that way from the beginning. I suppose that's why Jesus addressed it thousands of years ago. It is so much easier to see the speck in someone's eye and not the log in my own. Self-reflection is difficult. On that day, when my first reaction to the recovery house moving in next door to me was not in my backyard, <laughs> oh, I had to take a step back. I had to think about the ways I was like the train barreling through Kentucky, the Kentucky mountains, powered by inhumanity, happily swimming in the ocean of hate, greed, and inhumanity. I had to do that so that I could go and welcome the people who were coming in next door with some amount of sincerity. Self-reflection, mirror work, log in my own eye work, is brutal. It requires us to be honest with ourselves. It creates an opportunity for us to ask ourselves why we react the way we do in a particular situation. It pushes us to admit the ways we are like the train barreling through Kentucky and all those people we judge every day. And it invites us to acknowledge the rarely noticed ocean we are swimming in. It moves us to learn from those instances where we stumble so we might respond differently the next time. Now, there is good news. <laughs> uh, Texas State Representative Tellerico described what happened when the train holding the ill-gotten goal went, uh, coal went, uh, went barreling through the Kentucky mountains. Here's what he said. In Kentucky, a group of coal miners organized and brought their lawn chairs and their chewing tobacco to sit on the train tracks and take a stand for the rights of their fellow workers. 
We are that too. We are the coal miners too. The coal miners with the lawn chairs taking a stand. We are both. If we look inside ourselves, we see both the corporate executives fleeing their obligations of their workers and the fed up coal miners who are blocking the train. We all have pieces of greed and harshness, compassion and love in us. It's up to us what we do with them. Hello world, or Hitler was right. Greedy executives or coal miners with lawn chairs. It's up to us, but we won't even know we're doing it if we don't take a moment to be self-reflective. Here's the thing, unless we are willing to take a look inside, change the things that are destructive and inhumane and build up the things that create compassion and love, the world will not change. No matter what else we do, because it starts right here. The world will not become the place we dream about, the place we pray for each and every Sunday. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We don't have to put away the lens. Oh, no, no. It's not that we don't hold people accountable. I'm not saying that. But we do need to take out the mirror Let's start there with a little self-reflection, a little speck, a little log in my own eye, and the world will change. Because, my friends, we will change. May it be so. Let us stand now, once again, in body or spirit, as we sing from our hymnal number 575, O for a World. 575 in your hymn book. Constitutional law, 50 years ago or more, and he's 
longtime professor of law at St. Louis University and longtime head of the ACLU. And he died this week. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He had a good life, it sounds like, a good life. Uh, we'll pray for him and his family, loving God. Yeah. Other joys or concerns to be lifted up this morning? Well, I have a joy that we have our new website up, and Jen was amazing in putting it together. Thank, I want to thank Jen wherever you are. Where you are She's right behind you. <laughs> This is like somehow symbolic of Jen behind our heads. So, uh, and there's information that we'll talk about later on in the congressional meeting about the uh, senior housing project. But anyway, Jen, thank you very much. And, and Mickey already found things that need to be improved. So we'll just Excellent. keep working on it. So we're gonna pray that if you have something that you just lovingly bring it to Jeff and Jen. <laughs> Loving God. <laughs> Other joys or concerns? This is a joy. I just wanted to say that Violet's first birthday is tomorrow. Oh. And we're very excited. And you finished your exams, right? Yeah, and I am done with the bar exam, so I'm oh. hanging out for a little while. Well, so uh, we'll sing happy birthday to Violet. Uh, oh, she is a July birthday. Did we sing July birthdays? Yes. Yes, we did. But you know what, Jacob, when uh, August comes, we'll go ahead and sing uh, uh, her birthday too for Violet. So happy birthday and Jacob, all the best with that group bar exam or the results of it. We pray that everything works out well there. Loving God. Cheers. Other joys or concerns to be lifted up? I'm assuming that was Jacob back there. <laughs> <laughs> or else somebody else has his child. So. Uh -huh. Okay, well, let's take a moment then to pray. Uh, to uh, We'll pray silently, open your hearts and minds uh, to those things that have been lifted up and to the things that have been left unspoken. <laughs> Let us pray silently to God. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the Amen. Well, how shall we join God's work in the world? We've got something that we're going to do right at the end, so if there are other people who have some stuff that they want to bring to our attention, that would be, now would be a great time. Hey, Violet, I see you there. Here comes Kevin. Anybody else have something that needs, yeah. while Kevin's coming up, I'm just going to let folks know, and I didn't forget Al. Next Sunday, we're going to be talking about relationships and transformative relationships, and it's also Communion Sunday. So we decided, the Worship Planning Circle decided that a really great place for us to meet for worship next Sunday would be in the Commons to have a meal together to share communion and build relationships or deepen the relationships we already have. So be prepared to go to the Commons next Sunday, um, and that's where we will worship. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first of all, just a reminder to, uh, if you're a registered voter in Missouri, you can sign our petition to raise the minimum wage and include also uh, paid leave protections for hourly workers in the state of Missouri. Uh, myself and Bob are available after the service if you'd like to sign that. If you have signatures that you've collected, don't forget to bring those in. Um, and we have notaries here that can take care of that for you and we can get those turned into MCU. So just keep moving on that. If you've, if you've been putting off collecting signatures, now's a good time to do it. Um, if you have that petition at home and, and need to get out and do it, now's a really good time to do it. Um, also, we wanna remind folks, uh, this is in news and notes, please uh, 
we want to invite you to the MCU monthly meeting August 8th, uh, which will be at the Deaconess Foundation on 1000 North of Andavenner. Uh, this is a really busy time for MCU, uh, as well as collecting petitions. Um, we are also planning for our fall gala, and we need uh, all hands on deck for that, for uh, uh, just raising the money to fund the work that MCU does. So please consider participating in that. And then also there are opportunities for uh, restorative justice uh, for those who are formerly incarcerated. There are opportunities to work on environmental justice issues also within the community. And speaking of the latter, uh, for environmental justice. Uh, you may have noticed that this summer it's been a little harder to breathe with wildfires in Canada and over 100 degrees this past week, it's been a little tough. So in your news and notes, there's a call to action uh, to petition the state of Missouri, the Department of Natural Resources. Historically, St. Louis has had poor air quality. Uh, we just live in that spot and have a lot of industry in our, our neighborhoods. And the EPA has a requirement that uh, communities should reduce their pollutants by 15%. Um, and that technically brings Missouri within federal requirements, but it also leaves those limits dangerously close to being um, to the point where it affects our health. And any sort of change in, in uh, weather or just a, 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 you know, a little bit extra pollution can, can make things difficult for those who have trouble breathing. So we're asking people to sign this petition or, or, or log in and, and click that link um, at, in news and notes to ask the Department of Natural Resources to, to work even harder at this and shoot for 50% reduction in pollutants in the St. Louis area because that will provide enough of a buffer for unexpected events that may happen that would, hello, that would uh, cause problems for those living um, in our communities, especially those living close to uh, uh, places of industry along the river that goes all the way from North County up in Riverview all the way down to Lime. It, it is simply a stretch of industry uh, in St. Louis that affects a lot of lives. And as we all know, air moves and air travels. So I ask you to, to sign that petition by August 3rd. So. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, here comes Cindy. I wonder what she's going to talk about. <laughs> so, just one last reminder that today we have congregational meeting 15 minutes after worship. Uh, stay here so you can hear all the things that are happening, do some voting, and uh, do some celebrating. And it's not budget, right? So really, how great is this going to be? <laughs> okay. You know, we always wonder where we need to put this next section, but I just feel like when we are welcome people, people when we are welcoming people into the community we call Peace United Church of Christ, it is how we are joining God's work in the world. And so I'm going to invite Summer to come up here along with Sarah as we welcome Summer into the community of peace. Now, you, you, uh, you're going to say, what are you talking about? Summer has been around for such a long time. And she has, but she is making it official. So I'm going to invite Sarah to do the uh, introduction, and then we'll go uh, look at your, in your binder, in your front of your binder, you'll see a liturgy for reception of new members. So take a look at that, and you can follow along. It is my great pleasure uh, to introduce Summer Wise. I know it was some years ago, I was at the, the Black Lives Matter vigil, and something changed. There was a little wind of change that kind of happened, and that one that changed was Summer. Summer came and just kind of gently started waving our flags and rocking our boats. Summer has an amazing presence in our congregation as a poet, as a supporter, as a quiet giggle, as um, a wise woman. She does lots of wonderful work on our social media, and um, it's just a joy to welcome you, even though, as Wendy said, we love you already. <laughs> Oh, and extra points after the worship, if you can guess her favorite color, 
you get two hugs. <laughs> and it's not teal. <laughs> I'm going to put that down. Okay. And I'm just going to say, later on, if you stick around, you're going to see that Summer is going to step into the role of leader in the community team. So we're going to be uh, talking about that too. So uh, we're so excited. Uh, I, I'm just going to say one quick thing about Summer uh, before we move on. And that is to say, I wasn't here uh, the day Summer uh, uh, shared her poem. Uh, but if anybody was here and heard it, it was just um, a testimony of who we can actually be in the world. And um, that is how we turned out to it. Um, so if you didn't see it, if you didn't get to experience it, you can just find it anywhere. We've got it in written and we've got it in YouTube. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go. I'm just going to ask you a few questions and you're going to not cry. So. <laughs> Respecting divine mystery beyond our human knowing, reveal but not contained in the stories of our faith, will you strive to walk humbly with God? Celebrating the fullness of Jesus' witness flowing from the baptismal waters at the River Jordan and the stories of bread broken and shared, do you confess the God made known in the one we call Christ? Believing Jesus about God and trusting his example, will you accept the cost and joy of following him? Honoring the spirit revealed in the paradoxical, will you live the questions of our faith open to the continuing revelation of our still speaking God? Discerning strength and vulnerability, do you acknowledge your interdependence and mutual accountability with all of creation? Claiming God's grace abundant in our common life, will you covenant with Peace United Church of Christ to cherish inquiry, embrace diversity, honor vulnerability, and participate with the community in God's mission for the life of the church? Do you believe in God, the source, the fountain of life? Do you believe in Christ, the servant embodied in Jesus of Nazareth and in the church? Do you believe in the spirit, the guide, the liberating wellspring of life? And now, friends, pull out your binders because we are in covenant with one another. And that means we are working together, uh, accountable to one another. Let us, the members and friends of Peace United Church of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry. Let us say together, we welcome you with joy in the common life of this church. We covenant with you to equip one another for the work to which we feel called, striving for peace and justice among all people, protecting and restoring the integrity of all of our creation, and bringing hope to those most vulnerable. And that, my dear Summer, is that. <laughs> In the last bits of our worship, but make sure, but we will make sure you get that book because uh, once you're in, you're like hard to get out. <laughs> I believe I've talked about the Hotel California before. Um, uh, let us pray uh, together. Gracious God, we give thanks and ask your blessings on the many and diverse gifts we bring to join you in your work in the world. Amen. And now let us sing our closing hymn together in the binder, number 142, let us stand in body or spirit, 142 in your binder, Lord, you give the great commission, and as you're standing, just remember you are not leaving. <laughs> Thank you. 
we leave this sacred place and go into the world, the sacred place, let us remember we can change the world. Oh, yes, we can. Let's start with us. Joy, peace.